Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about creating combo product listings for your Etsy print-on-demand business using Gelato. Hey everybody, Jeff here for POD Insights, the podcast and YouTube channel. In the past, I have made videos about how to create combination listings for your Etsy print-on-demand shop using Printify and Printful. And I've gotten some questions in the comments on those videos asking if there is a similar workflow available for Gelato if you use Gelato for your order fulfillment. And the answer is yes, there is a way to do it. It is similar to the process that you would use for Printful where you're gonna be linking the products to your Gelato account, but there are some differences. So we're gonna walk through how to do that in this video. Now, when creating combo listings for your Etsy shop, the same rules apply no matter who your fulfillment partner is, meaning you're only gonna be able to apply one shipping profile to that whole listing. You won't be able to charge different shipping prices per product. So before you actually start making combination listings, you wanna make sure that you've carefully selected the products so that the shipping charge that you're gonna apply is going to make sense for all the products in the listing. So we're gonna do an example in this video using a unisex t-shirt, a women's t-shirt, and a sweatshirt. So that's what I'm going to plan on using as sort of my one of my templates for combination listings. And I'm gonna show you first how to create an Etsy listing template that you can reuse to, uh, to then sync your products to Gelato after you create the listing. But it's important to pick the products first because that's gonna determine what I add to my template for variations. But once I've determined that, I can come over to my Etsy shop and I can start by clicking on the add a listing button on my listings page. Now for this step, all I'm gonna be doing is creating a template that I'm gonna reuse every time I wanna create a new combination listing. I'm not actually gonna be publishing this one, this one's just gonna be the template. And because this is just gonna be a template, I'm not gonna add actual product mock-up photos to this, but you do need to add at least one photo just to save this listing as a draft. So what I suggest doing is if you have your size charts or a color chart or something like that that you're gonna use anyway, go ahead and put that in the template now, that way you won't have to upload it later. All right, so I've added the size charts for the unisex t-shirt, the women's t-shirt, and the sweatshirt because that's what I am making this template for. That's it for the photos for now. I'm gonna scroll down here, and for the title, I'm just gonna put in a placeholder so I know which template this is. So I'm just gonna call this one t-shirt plus sweatshirt combo listing. That way, when it's in my drafts, I'll know which template this is. Anything that's unlikely to change between the template and your final listing, you can go ahead and fill out now to save yourself time. So I'm gonna change these settings here to another company or person. It's a finished product and it is made to order. Now under category with a combo listing, you can just pick the one that you think is gonna get the most views. So in this case, I'm just gonna pick t-shirts. All right, we don't have to do anything for any of these attributes here for our template. For renewal options, I always choose manual. I did a whole video on why. Basically, if this listing doesn't make a sale for four months, I don't want it to automatically renew and charge me another 20 cents. I want a chance to look at it first and decide if I even want to renew it or if if I want to make changes to it first, it will still automatically relist when it makes a sale because we're gonna set our quantity up to the maximum. For the type, of course, it is a physical product. And for the description, you wanna put something in here to save yourself time later. Remember, this is a template. So all of the information that you would normally sort of paste in here that includes the material, the fit type, all right, there we go. We've got the product description information for all three of the product types we're gonna have in this listing. I also recommend you know, including any disclaimers about returns if you don't take returns, which I don't recommend you take returns or exchanges if you're doing print on demand. So include that type of stuff in your template as well so that you don't have to add it all later. All right, for your production partners, you're gonna select Gelato for this one. You don't have to add it to a section if you don't want to, but if you have a section that you like to keep all your combo listings in, then you can certainly select the section. For tags, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave this one blank because you're gonna to wanna to craft your tags based on the keywords of the design theme for each individual listing. And now we've come down to the price and quantity and variation section. So I'm gonna skip the inventory and pricing because all of that info is actually gonna be in the variation section and here's where it's gonna take us a few minutes to get this done for the template, but then it'll save us a lot of time when we create each listing. So we're gonna click on add variations. We're gonna add two variations here. One needs to be a custom variation because we are gonna put the information about the size and the product type in the same variation description. Then our second variation will be our colors. So for that first one, we're actually gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of the list and just do create new variation because we wanna type our own thing in. So for this one, I'm gonna put size and type, 
And then for the second one, we're gonna do primary color. And we also wanna check off all three boxes here for both variations so that we can sync up the individual product variants to our Gelato account later. But now we just need to create the variations that we're going to use. For size and type here, this is where we're gonna custom make everything. So what we need to do is create one variation for each combination of product type and size. So we have three products. And if we're gonna do, let's say five sizes, that's five times three. That means we need 15 variations here. So we're gonna start with the unisex t-shirt. I'm just gonna put an S for small and then dash unisex t-shirt. Before you hit enter or click add, highlight this part with the dash and the product and then copy that. Just we'll do control and copy. Save some time in a second. Hit enter or click add. Now we need to do medium through 2XL because that's what I decided I'm gonna do. So now I can just put an M space paste so that'll save me a little bit of time at least. So now I can put my large space, paste. Now I'm gonna do this for sizes small to 2XL for the unisex t-shirt, the women's t-shirt, and the sweatshirt. So like I said, when I'm done, I'll have 15 variations here. All right, there we go. I've got sizes small through 2XL for all three of these products. Now, one thing that's important also, now would be the time to catch whether these products are all available in all of these sizes. If let's, for example, let's say that the women's tee was not available in 2XL from Gelato, I'd have to remove that so that I don't have to delete it every time I create a listing. All right, so we're done with our type and size variations. Now we're gonna do the color variation. So what we wanna do is just add the colors that we're going to use. Now, the more colors you add, the more time it's gonna take you to create each listing later, because later on, we're gonna be having to sync each of these variants to a product in our Gelato account. And the more colors, the more variations, and so the more time. I'm only gonna do three for this one. I'm gonna do white, black and heather gray. All right, there we go. I've got all three of my color options, white, black, heather gray. I could see doing navy in there too, but even that. Each one of these that you add is 15 more variations. So once we're done with that, we can click on save and continue. It will create our full list of variations here. You can see we've got everything listed out. And one thing you can also do by selecting literally all of them is just use this checkbox in the corner to select everything and update the quantity. We're gonna set this to 999 for everything because we want to set that max quantity so that these can keep relisting and reselling. Now, normally part of my template process would be to add my pricing in here to save time later. However, with Gelato, setting your prices is part of the syncing process. So we don't have to set our pricing here because Gelato is just gonna override it anyway. Now we can move on and get the shipping profile assigned. And what I would recommend doing is create a special one just for this combo listing, especially if you need to tweak your shipping prices from your individual product listings. Now I don't currently have one established that I like to use with my Gelato combo listings. So what I'm gonna do is just copy one of the ones from Gelato that's already here because it has some of the information I need already in it. All right, once you're set with that, go ahead and save that profile and select it for this listing. And that way it'll just automatically be selected when you create copies of this and create your listings. One thing I forgot to mention before I hit save here was you also wanna change the name so that you know exactly what shipping profile this is. So I would call this one T-shirts plus sweatshirt combo. All right, at the very bottom, we can hit apply on the return policy. I'm using my shop return policy of no returns or exchanges. And then that's it. All we need to do now is hit the save as draft button in the bottom right corner. Remember, we're not publishing this listing. This is just a template. So click on save as draft. All right, that may have seemed time consuming, but now we're gonna be able to reuse that template every time we wanna create a combo listing that has the two t-shirts and a sweatshirt in it and we won't have to do at least that part of it ever again. All we'll have to do is the syncing with Gelato. So we're on the draft view of our listings page, which you can get to by just looking at the right navigation once you're on your listings page and select the radio button here for drafts. Then when you're ready to create one, just find the one you want, t-shirt and sweatshirt combo listing. Click on the little gear icon in the corner, and then what you wanna do is click on the copy option. We're not gonna edit this actual draft. We're gonna create a copy of it and then the copy is the thing we're gonna publish. So here's our copy, and what I'm gonna do first, before I do anything else, I'm gonna change the name to the product that we're actually going to create, so the design that we're gonna create. And for this example, I'm gonna use a cat mom design, and I'm planning like it's maybe gonna be for Mother's Day or something like that, so I'm just going to give it the title that I plan on using. I would have already done my research, of course, for the design and the keywords that I wanna use at this point in the process, so I'm gonna go ahead and name it now. All right, now this is not the best title I've ever created, but I just wanted to get something in there so we could move on with the example. So the only other thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and enter the description information 
for this design that I have. And then if this was a specific design, like for Mother's Day, I could go ahead and select Mother's Day in the uh, the holiday attribute section here. All right, so with that information entered, I don't need to do anything else at this point in time. I'm actually just gonna click on Save as Draft again. So that's gonna be behind my head now. So click on Save as Draft. And if it gives you this little error message, just click on Save as Draft again and it should work. All right, so now you can see we've got a second draft in our drafts folder that looks the same, except now it's got a new name. It's Cat Mom Shirt, so you can tell the difference there. Now you don't actually need to do anything else yet. You don't need to publish it or do any other details because with the process, the workflow with Gelato, uh, in your Gelato account, you'll actually be able to see this even though it's just a draft. When you come to your Gelato account on your store page where all of your products are listed, if you don't see it yet, you might need to click on this little blue link to sync products. And that might take a couple of minutes depending on how many products are in your store. So just maybe go get a cup of coffee and come back. Once that is synced, you should now see the draft that you created. You might want to go to your Not Connected tab if uh, you have an awful lot under the all products and it's not near the top of the list or you can just use this little search box at the top of the field here so i'm gonna put in cat mom and it brings that draft that i created right up here now notice what it's telling us right now there are three different fields here the green field indicates how many variants product variants are synced to gelato the red field indicates how many are not synced to gelato and the gray field indicates how many are ignored so right now, all 45 variants in this listing are not synced to Gelato. Now we can go ahead and click on Connect Product. And that will take you to the product catalog to select a product and add your design. So let's do the unisex t-shirt first. I'm just going to click on men's clothing, t-shirts, and the 64,000 here, the one we said we were going to use. All right, there's a couple things you want to make sure that you do here in this part of the process to make sure you don't have any sync issues. First of all, your size options are over here on the left. Make sure if you don't want 3XL, you deselect that option. Remember, we didn't do 3XL in our template, so that's not going to be there. So I'm going to uncheck the box for 3XL. For the color options, you can also select multiple. And remember, I did white, I did black, and I did heather gray. So I'm going to select all three of those. And on the right side of the screen, you will see it adding those additional variants. So we've got three colors and five sizes now, and that's all of the options we need for the unisex t-shirt. Now we can go ahead and add our design. So I'm just going to go to my files folder here and upload that design. All right, so here is the design. I got this one from Vexels, and I'm just going to make my image placement here. So I think that placement looks good. You can switch between your variants here to see it on the different colors, make sure it looks okay. And then once I'm satisfied with the way that looks, I'm going to click on the top right corner, continue to mockups. They have a step built in here where I can actually select some mockups to push to this listing so I don't have to manually download them and then upload them into the listing. You can skip this step if you already have mockups that you're going to use. If you made your own mockups for this design and you don't want to use any of Gelato's mockups, you can click on skip this step. But if you want to use any of Gelato's mockups in the listing and not have to manually upload them, we're going to click on edit mockups. Now, if you still want to download these separately and then make edits to them uh, and upload them yourself, you can actually just use this download uh, button at the top here. I also want to point out some of the mockups that you see here with the little purple circle with the crown. Those are only available to Gelato Plus subscription subscribers. What I'd recommend doing is if you want to use like these flat mockups to show your color options, just download those and you can add your own background to them or something. But uh, let's just say I want to send through uh, the default one that's here, just this flat one. So we'll leave that one selected and then we will go ahead and click on continue to connect. All right, now here's where the magic happens. So on the left side of the screen, Gelato shows you the product variants that you have in this listing. And then on the right side, you're going to select which product variant you actually want that to be. So for the first one in here, we have unisex t-shirt, white, size small. So here we go, white, size small is the first option here in the dropdown. So I'm gonna pick that one. It's also worth noting that thankfully, as you go and select these, Gelato removes them from the list that you have to pick from, so you can't accidentally assign the same product variant twice. All right, we did all 15 variants for the unisex t-shirt, and there's still going to be 30 more variants that are not connected, but we haven't actually designed or made that product yet. So what we're going to need to do is go ahead and finish this connection and then come back and repeat this process for the two remaining product types because you, you can really only connect to one type at a time. So we're going to click on continue to prices up here in the corner. And so the last step before we publish this with all of these connected variants uh, is going to gonna be to set our prices. So this is why we did not set all the pricing 
in the template listing when we made it because if we're using Gelato, part of the process of syncing these is gonna be to set our prices. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can, you can select at the top here to set your retail prices to a specific level. You can set the profit amount to a specific level or you can set the profit to a specific percentage. So what I'd recommend doing is use these options at the top here to set your pricing at a certain level and then go ahead and make adjustments to it. So for example, um, if I said I'm gonna set my retail price to 21.99, cause that's the vast majority of the products, uh, I'm gonna set that. That'll change everything to 21.99. Now I only have to go through and change the ones that are not 21.99. All right, so now we are ready to click on publish. So in the top right corner, go ahead and click on publish. Now that will probably take a minute or two to come through into your Etsy account and it will actually update here as well after it's published. Once the publishing is successful, you will see that these numbers have updated here on the product listing. It's now showing that you have 15 variants connected and 30 that are not connected. So we need to go through this process two more times to do the design and syncing process for the women's t-shirt and the sweatshirt. Just click on connect product again, select the next product from the catalog, and then repeat that same process each step of the way, making sure you select the right colors, sizes, upload the design, select the mock-up you wanna use if you wanna use any, or just skip that step if you have your own, and then sync up the product variants and then click on publish. And when you are finished syncing all those product variants, you'll see 45 here under the variants connected and you'll see zeros for not connected and ignored. That means they're all connected to Gelato now and orders for any of those products will sync to your account. However, in order to receive any orders for these products, we actually still need to publish this listing in our Etsy account, because remember, even though we said we were publishing on Gelato, this, this listing stayed in a draft status on Etsy, which is actually a good thing because we don't want it to be published until we have everything connected the way we want it. So now we can go back into the draft of this listing. And at the top, you'll see whatever mockups you selected to come through should have come through here, unless you were at the maximum of 10 already, in which case they kind of just cut off and, and don't upload. But assuming you're good with the mockups at this point, the only thing that should be remaining at this point is if you did not do the tags yet. Now you could have done the tags for this when we put the title and the description in after we knew what design we were using for this listing. So you could have done the tags at that time but if you hadn't, make sure you do all 13 of your tags. And then it doesn't hurt to take a quick scan of your product variations and prices, but now you should see all of the SKU numbers for the products from Gelato and all of the prices that you entered assigned to all the correct product variants here. So you should be all set. One thing you might need to do though is change the linked photos because Gelato tries to link photos to each variant for the listing so that when the customer selects one of the variants, it shows them the actual product. And notice here what happened. So because I only had one image spot left, when Gelato synced my sweatshirts, they were only able to push that Heather gray color mock-up. So what you would wanna do is after your mock-ups are done, go into link photos and just go through and make sure you've linked the correct photo. And if you don't care about linking the photos, you can just open link photos and clear all of them out of there so that it's not confusing. But we already did the shipping profile. We already did the refund policy. So now we're finally ready to actually hit publish on this. And again, if you get this error message, go ahead and just hit the publish button again. The message should go away and the listing should publish. All right, now here's our finished product listing with all three product types in it, which will be fulfilled by Gelato. Now, pretend I put the work in and actually have some good mock-ups here. I just wanted to show you the options and what they look like for the customer. So as you can see, they have size and type here, which we entered as one of our variations. They have all of the different options to pick from here. This is gonna be all of the different size and product type combos. It'll update the pricing based on that. And then the second variation is gonna be for them to select their color option. And so there you go. That's how you create a combo listing using Gelato so that your orders will still sync to your Gelato account and go right into fulfillment. And then anytime you want to create a new combo listing, just go to that draft folder in your Etsy listings and create a new copy of the template you created so that you can save yourself some time in syncing up your products. So important things to keep in mind. Number one, again, make sure that you don't combine products that have vastly different shipping charges because you can only assign one shipping profile. And then second, don't try to do too many variations in your combo listings. I would not do like 
seven or eight color options on five different sizes because you're gonna have way too many variations that you have to sync. It'll just take you forever. But if you keep it limited to two or three product types and maybe three to four colors maximum, it should be a reasonable process and you'll get faster at it the more you do it. So I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if it was or if you have more questions about this process. Also hit that like button if you found it helpful so YouTube can show the video to more people and subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Thanks everybody. See you next time.